12. The news at 5.30 starts right now. An active shooting situation at Joel Olstein's Lakewood Church in Houston is now over. The shooter dead, a young child and a church member shot. It's confirmed the woman who opened fire was in the lobby and she was shot dead by church security. That shooting happened just before two o'clock this afternoon in between services there. According to police, the woman entered the church with a long rifle and with a small child. They say she began shooting and was immediately engaged by two off-duty law enforcement officers working security. Police say the woman was shot and killed at the scene. The five-year-old child with that woman was also hit and is in critical condition right now. They also say a 57-year-old man was hit in the leg. There is an active scene at the Lakewood Church right now. The church's pastor, Joel Olstein, has been in contact with law enforcement. We will bring you more information as we get it right here on air and on KSAT.com. And the other developing story, some people living near Warsbach and Whisper Sound may be without power after a car crashes into a light pole. Officers say at the scene, a man hit the light pole and the impact caused the vehicle he was driving to turn around and hit another vehicle before it caught fire. Despite all that, police say the man and the two people in the other vehicle were not hurt. However, all three people were taken to the hospital as a precaution. Police say it may take a little while before power is restored. A homeowner gets a big shock when he finds a fire truck in front of his home earlier this afternoon. Firefighters called out to his home on Polaris Street, not far from New Braunfels Avenue, around 2 o'clock. When they got there, they noticed smoke coming from the back of the home, saying the fire started in the closet of a back bedroom. It only took minutes to put the fire out, but crews think there is about $20,000 worth of damage to that home weekend movie plans were completely lost for some people heading to a Santico's theater. Two more theaters have been able to reopen today. According to the company's social media posts, Santico's Casablanca and Northwest locations welcome moviegoers again. Yesterday afternoon, the Palladium Theater, located in the rim, was the only Santico's theater open. On Thursday and Friday, the company cited technical issues as the reason as to why all San Antonio theaters were closed. So far, the theater chain has not elaborated on what the issue is. No word yet on when the other locations will reopen. Well, as the county works to develop a contract, investing in millions of dollars into street outreach program for Leon Valley, tonight we're looking into how effective the city's current efforts are to address homelessness. Our Avery Everett sat down with Leon Valley's chief of police to talk about the citations that have come out of the city's recent ordinance that essentially bans homelessness. Well, homelessness is countywide, but here in Leon Valley, city leaders say it has drained their resources. And that's one of the reasons they passed that original ordinance last summer that bans many aspects of homelessness, like camping or lodging at a public park overnight, or even sleeping in a car parked on a city street for more than 24 hours within city limits. Back in December, we first brought you a story on how Bear County planned to work with Leon Valley and local homeless organizations to create a new street outreach program to address homelessness. That program is still in its infancy stage, but it pushed us to look at the results of that original ordinance in its first six months. The police chief here tells me this department has given out multiple verbal warnings, but only gave out one citation during that time period. Tonight on the night beat, we'll break down more of those numbers and you'll hear from the police chief himself. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Around Texas, Harris County Sheriff's deputies in Houston are calling a deadly shooting there a road rage incident. They say the victim got out of his car and walked back towards the vehicle that was behind him. Deputies say someone in that vehicle opened fire, hitting the victim. That vehicle then sped off. The victim was rushed to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. But the victim was not alone at the time of the shooting. A one-year-old child was in the victim's vehicle. Deputies say the child was unharmed. So far, no arrests have been made in this case. The man accused of stealing two monkeys from the Dallas Zoo last year, no longer facing animal cruelty charges. Those charges against Davion Irvin have been dropped. He was facing six misdemeanor counts and under Texas law, misdemeanors carry a maximum sentence of a year in jail. They say Irvin is still in jail and has already served that amount of time. His case is on hold indefinitely after he was found mentally incompetent to stand trial last year. Still, he does face two felony charges of burglary of a building. Police say Irvin cut the fence around the habitat of a clouded leopard, allowing it to escape. That leopard, though, was found the same day. 
News across America now, a reward now increased to $100,000. That's being offered for information leading to the arrest of Kenneth Wayne DeHart. He's accused of killing a Tennessee sheriff's deputy, and there's a massive manhunt for him right now. A procession was held Friday to mourn and honor Deputy Greg McCowan. Deputies say DeHart shot and killed McCowan during a traffic stop in Maryville, about 30 miles west of Gatlinburg. A second deputy was injured after firing at DeHart, but she was treated and released. Detectives say DeHart is considered armed and dangerous. President Joe Biden is expected to travel to East Palestine, Ohio Friday as the city marks the one year anniversary of the Norfolk Southern train derailment. 38 cars of the train jumped the tracks last February and 11 of the cars were carrying hazardous materials that caught fire. More than a million pounds of hazardous chemicals reportedly seeped into the soil, water and was released into the air. During the president's visit, he will explain how his administration has worked with state and local leaders to hold Norfolk Southern accountable and to support the community moving forward. Well, more than 20 million people across the northeast region of the country are under a winter storm watch. A nor'easter is expected to develop early this week and could dump as much as a foot of snow in some areas by the end of Tuesday. This new round of winter weather, part of the storm system, that's bringing severe weather to the Gulf Coast and southeast today into Monday. Still ahead, premature births are on the rise in the U.S. And according to a new study, a chemical found in just about everything we touch may be the cause. In your health headlines, a new study is listing a synthetic chemical as a possible cause for an increase in premature births. Researchers say the chemicals, called phthalates, are now are, now, are known as everywhere chemicals because they are so common. They appear in items like food packaging, products like soap and shampoo, furniture, even clothing. Scientists say the chemical can disrupt how the placenta functions, which could trigger premature births. The researchers found up to 10% of preterm births were linked to the chemical in 2018. That could explain the rise in premature babies born in the country. The American Chemistry Council, however, disputes the results of the report, saying the study did not establish a clear cause and effect between phthalates and premature births. A potential new therapy could provide some long-term relief to those who have persistent arthritic knee pain, stem cell injections. Researchers from China reviewed all the current studies on stem cell injections into knees of people with knee arthritis. They found that after some stem cells were injected into the knee joint, people reported lower pain levels and better knee function on average after a minimum of three months, with benefits lasting even after a year. Now, knee pain affects one in four people over the age of 55 every year. Though stem cell therapy is not widely available, researchers say it offers a promising possibility to managing knee pain. All right, so we know tonight is about football, but for the Swifties out there, we'd like to confirm Taylor Swift made it back to the U.S. in plenty of time to attend the big game. Take a look, visual proof right here. Her private plane landed in L.A. last night. She traveled about nine hours from Tokyo after performing in the city earlier in the day. This is a reminder, if you have plans to head out to the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo, don't forget to check out KSAT.com. We have everything you need to know before heading out to the fairgrounds. Just look for this story on our homepage. You will find a guide for hours, ticket prices, entertainment, parking, and more. Yeah, and if you were out there on the rodeo grounds this weekend, a different story from yesterday compared to today. Yesterday, we had the cloud cover, a few showers in the afternoon. It was humid. Today, quite the opposite. Views like this, plenty of sunshine, blue skies, low humidity as well, following a cold front that moved in earlier this morning. But it has been a bit windy. In fact, those winds not going anywhere, continuing tonight and even into our Monday tomorrow. But with that cooler and drier air filtering into the region, we've got some chilly mornings followed by nice afternoons on tap through at least the first half of the upcoming week. But as additional moisture works in, our next disturbance approaches the state. Rain chances do return ahead of next weekend. All those details headed your way after the break. So Tiffany's here with us. We're representing Valentine's Day and 
Mia, we've got the big game <laughs> going on. We certainly do. I know Mary just walked in as well. I know. She's also <laughs> repping, so we've pretty much got it covered here this evening. Uh, yes, yeah, so it has actually been pretty pleasant out yeah, there today. Really and has. it will be for any watch parties you have this evening, but it will still be breezy, which means after the sun goes down, conditions are likely going to turn a bit chilly out there. Speaking of the winds, let's take a look at some of those peak wind gusts across South Central Texas from today. Generally, they've been in the range of about 25 to even 35 miles per hour at times. A 28 mile per hour wind gust, that was our peak that we clocked in here in the Alamo City. Take a look farther out west though in Del Rio, 38 miles per hour. That was the peak wind gust. So yes, it has been a bit windy out there at times. and We are still dealing with some of those winds this hour. And again, those are not expected to go anywhere, at least as we head into the overnight tonight and into the first half of the day for your Monday. I think additional northwest wind gusts upwards of 25 to 30 miles per hour will be possible. So still keep all of those loose lawn items secured, empty trash cans closer to the house before we start to see those winds subside a bit more into tomorrow afternoon. What those winds have been doing, though, ushering in that cooler and drier air. We've seen plenty of this today. Gorgeous sunshine, blue sky, 60. 63 comfortable degrees right now here in town and a dew point of 43. So remember dew points, how we measure the moisture in the atmosphere. Those have come down as that drier air filters in. And as we look ahead at the upcoming week, really that low humidity is going to continue into tomorrow, Tuesday, even Wednesday for the most part, but we'll see those winds flip back in from the southeast. So a touch more moisture will start to build in on your Valentine's Day, and that will continue Thursday and Friday. That's also when we'll start to see a few rain chances move back into the forecast. We'll have more on that in just a bit. But if you are stepping out this evening, remember it will turn chilly thanks to those breezy conditions. Temperatures falling through the 50s, especially after the sun goes down, eventually into the 40s later on tonight. And with mostly clear skies in place for the most part through the overnight, those thermometers will continue to fall. It is going to be a chilly start first thing tomorrow morning, mid to upper 30s, especially north and west of San Antonio, low 40s for the most part here in Bear County and pointing farther off to the south as well as the east. So you will want to bundle up out the door for the Monday morning commute and drive to school. But here's the thing, into the afternoon, gorgeous conditions in store. Plenty of sunshine, blue skies for your Monday, an absolute gem of a day. 56 degrees at noon, high temperatures topping off a little bit cooler than what we saw earlier this afternoon in the low 60s. Around 63 here in town, 62 in Canyon Lake as well as Seguin, 66 in Nixon as well as Floresville, Pleasanton, Poteet, 60 in Kerrville, 60 as well over in the Bernie area tomorrow afternoon. Tuesday, more of the same. Again, more of that moisture starts to move in on Valentine's Day and then into Thursday and especially on Friday. That's when we're expected to see our next rain chances work in. There's that moisture that moves in on Wednesday. The cloud cover returns. An area of low pressure approaching from the west will combine with that moisture to make for a soggy into the work week. Right now on Friday, we've got a 60% chance for some scattered rain. Maybe a few storms before our next front blows in and clears us out for next weekend. More on that in the days ahead as we fine tune those details. Until then, enjoy the next couple of days. They're going to be really nice for us guys. Simply perfect. Thank you, Mia. Of course. All right, Mary, it's too bad it's such a slow day in the sports world. I mean, what are we even going to talk about? I know. What could there possibly be? <laughs> no, we're talking about the biggest thing going on in sports today. I want you to think during the commercial break how many times I'm about to say Super Bowl in sports. Super Bowl 58 is finally here, here featuring the one seed San Francisco 49ers and three seed Kansas City Chiefs. But can't forget about what's going on in the Alamo City. The UTSA women's basketball team takes down FAU in dominant fashion. Highlights of the Roadrunners big win coming up right after the break. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Legacies are on the line in Super Bowl 58. Kyle Shanahan can finally get past the Super Bowl hurdle and shed off the label of a coach who can't seal the deal. Shanahan, if you remember, was the Falcons offensive coordinator when Atlanta blew a 28-3 lead in Super Bowl 51. And three years later, the 49ers held a 10-point lead before the Chiefs scored three touchdowns in six minutes to win Super Bowl 54. 
Also with the win today, Shanahan and his dad, Mike Shanahan, would become the first father-son duo to win Super Bowls as head coaches. Meanwhile, quarterback Brock Purdy can go from being Mr. Irrelevant to Super Bowl champion. On the other side, for Kansas City's Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid, a win in the big game would elevate them to a level reached only by the most accomplished quarterbacks and coaches. Getting a third Lombardi trophy in five seasons and becoming the first team in 19 seasons to go back to back would put KC in the talk of the best dynasties in the Super Bowl era. Now back to the 49ers sideline. San Antonio native Spencer Burford, who played at Wagner High School before a standout career with UTSA, is the first former member of the UTSA football team to play in a Super Bowl. The first UTSA alum to play in the big game actually came out of the Roadrunners track and field program. Teddy Williams, a.k.a. Fast Teddy. Williams suited up for the Carolina Panthers in Super Bowl 50. Burford is in his second year in the league and has been a key member of the Niners offensive line in 12 outings. You already know our community is rooting hard for Burford. All right, the Super Bowl kicked off during your KSAT news at 530. Here's the latest scoring update from Allegiant Stadium. No score still in the first quarter. The 49ers came in favored by one and a half points and Vegas has the over under set at 40. Seven. I hope all of your obscure prop bets are a hit so far. Fatigue was a big topic of conversation after the San Antonio Spurs dropped their seventh straight game to the Brooklyn Nets last night. But that story is relevant to players all throughout the NBA. The stretch leading up to the All-Star weekend is grueling, not to mention the Spurs are three games into their month-long rodeo road trip. The fatigue showed in San Antonio's shooting last night. Victor Wembanyama, Devin Vassell, and Kelvin Johnson were the only Spurs in double-digit scoring, and the team shot 39% from the field while Brooklyn hit 56% of its shots and had six double-digit scores. No surprise, that was the difference in the 123-103 to 103 loss. Shooting helps. Uh, you know, somebody shoots 50% from three and you shoot 32. Uh, you're in defensive transition a lot. You got to make a lot of stops, and you know that's difficult for us. So uh, tough night in that regard. Shooting better helps a little bit of everything. The Spurs have two more games before the All-Star break begins, starting with 19 and 34 Toronto tomorrow at 6:30. Next, the squad is in Dallas Wednesday. Then they don't play again until the following Thursday, February 22nd. Our KSET Sports team will be at the All-Star game in Indianapolis, covering Victor Wembanyama and Jeremy Sohan's appearances. Convocation Center this afternoon, the UTSA women's basketball team welcomed UAB to town. Big opportunity for the Roadrunners here. Second quarter, Kyra White goes coast to coast for the eight point lead, forcing UAB to take a timeout. White finished with 12 points, helping the Roadrunners to an eight point lead in halftime. Into halftime, UTSA wins. 76 to 58, a big win over the AAC leader. Asia Proctor led the Roadrunners with 14 points. Four Roadrunners finished in double figures. Next, UTSA visits Tulsa Wednesday at 6.30 in the evening. All right, let's check out some top plays around the sports world from the weekend so far. Pacers versus Knicks, Tyrese Halliburton passes it off the backboard to himself. Then to the corner where Pascal Siakam hits the triple. You don't see that every day. All right, La Liga now. Real Madrid's Vinicius Jr. fires a strike from the outside, from outside the penalty area. He curled that one perfectly. Real Madrid won 4-0. All right, in college softball, Alabama versus Georgia Tech. A fly ball to deep right. Bama's Larissa Pruitt robs the potential grand slam. It turned into a double play and Bama won that one five to one. And how about a good old fashioned college basketball buzzer beater? Evansville and Murray State tied. Jacoby Wood comes up clutch for Murray State with a step back triple to win the game. How about that? And then on instant replay tonight, guys, we're having uh, we're breaking it all down from Super Bowl 58. So be sure to tune in at 11. And it's more than the big game, right? Because there's the performances. I've been listening to Usher all day long. Yeah, I know. Same. That's Same. good for us. If you grew up with Usher, you know. Yes. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much, Mary. We'll be right back after this.
All right, so breezy tonight and into the first half of your Monday. Other than that, a gorgeous day. It will be chilly in the morning, starting off in the upper 30s, low 40s, high temperatures, though very pleasant in the 60s. That continues into Tuesday, then monitoring those rain chances ahead of next weekend. We had to get up here, all of us. It's like Galentine's Girls Night. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so fun. <laughs> we'll, we'll see you back here tonight on the Night Beat.